Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of 1998 Represent. Today, we are taking a look at uh, Fat Boy Slim's You've Come a Long Way, Baby. This is his second studio album. Let me get my notes out here for it. Uh, released um, either, depending on where you were, um, October 19th in the UK and October 20th in um, the North, in North in America in uh, 1998. So October 19th and, and October 20th were the release dates for this. Um, again, this is his second studio album. And I remember um, not listening, I actually didn't listen to his album in its, from front to back all the way through until just a few days ago. I was familiar with some of the singles off of the album because they were just kind of, a lot of them all were kind of just everywhere, um, you know, like later in 1998 and through 1999 and onward. But I really hadn't listened to the entire album at all. I was familiar with some of his stuff, um, mostly the Rockefeller Skank, because it was that one was the one that was kind of just everywhere with the whole Funk Soul Brothers Check It Out now bit. And I remember that showing up, that song showing up in an episode of Sex in the City. I don't remember what season it was, but I just remember there was an episode where Carrie Bradshaw's, Bradshaw's friend, I forget the character's name, was kind of standing around at a party and that uh, that song was playing. Um, some other, let's take a look at the actual singles off this album. So the first single off this album was a Rockefeller Skank that came out um, in June of that year. So June 8th, 1998. Then we had Gangster Trippin', which was released October 5th. Uh, Praise You, that was the other one I kind of knew off this album. Praise You came out um, in 1999, January 4th, 1999. Well, as a single, I should say. The album was 98, but the singles were getting released periodically up through 1999. Um, next single was Right Here, Right Now. That was released, um, let's see, April 19th, 1999. And then Build It Up, Tear It Down was released September 15th of 1999. Uh, let's take a look at the track listing here. So the track listing first is Right Here, Right Now. That's a pretty solid track. Uh, a lot of the songs on this album kind to uh, tend to feed into the longer side because they are kind of like... Uh, dance music, house music. Let's see. Uh, Wikipedia has a genre listed as as big beat and techno. It's kind of a little bit of both, I think. But uh, right here, right now, that's track one. At track two, we have the Rockefeller Skank. Really good song. I remember that song. Like I said, showing up all over. Um, like I said, it was an episode of Sex in the City. It was in a bunch of other stuff. And I remember uh, most recently, I used it a lot in the kind of uh, rock game or uh, rhythm game. Remix, remix video game Fuser. So Fuser, unfortunately, is no longer available, but that was one of the songs I would constantly be using in my uh, crate with the Rockefeller Skank. There's um, Effing in Heaven, a song I didn't love. Um, they re It's been called, uh, renamed just uh, In Heaven and uh, Effing in Heaven, and it just has that Effing in Heaven line repeated over and over and over, pretty much ad nauseum throughout the song. It was kind of annoying. I didn't love it. But one thing that kind of made me not hate the song entirely is there's this like one little audio line at the end of the song where the guy's like, I don't really like this, don't play this for anyone, or something like that. It kind of gave me a little chuckle when that uh, line came up. But that is F in Heaven is, uh, let's see, so that's track three. We have Gangster Trippin' at track number four. Uh, build It Up, Tear It Down at track five. We have California with a K at track, or uh, California and it spells a K at track six. Soul Surfing is track 7. Uh, we have um, You're Not From Brighton, which is track 8. Track 9 is Praise You, one of the other songs I was somewhat familiar with just because it got released as a single and it was had some decent like radio play and what have you. Uh, track 10 is Love Island. Track 11 is Acid uh, 8000. And I guess there are some bonus tracks on the Australian version, which are um, how, could they, how Could They Hear Us? I don't remember if I listened to that one or not. The Japanese version has... Um, the World Went Down, which is learned with that one is, that album is just a few minutes longer than the other one. And then the UK Limited Edition has Everybody Loves a Carnival, um, a song called Michael Jackson, Next to Nothing, and S. Uh, Paradis. And then there's a few other ones released as like 10th Anniversary Editions and what have you. So I ended up really liking the, the album. The singles I kind of already knew. Um, the one song, the only song I didn't love was uh, "Effing It in Heaven." It was just kind of annoying, but like I said, that little bit, that one little line at the end, kind of redeemed it slightly. Um, if I were to listen to the album again, I'll probably just skip that track entirely. I kind of just didn't love it, but 
That was the only track I didn't like. And through my research on this album, one thing I found that was really interesting about this was, um, let me actually, I have it in my notes here. The album was created using an Atari ST computer. So I looked at, looked into it, and I guess the, the Atari ST came out in like the mid-80s, and it was like a pretty interesting looking computer because it actually had MIDI input and output ports on it. So you could plug like a MIDI uh, piano or keyboard into it. You could have um, output going into like a different, like, like a mixing board or whatever you might have, but whatever you might want. But in the research that said he did the um, album on an Atari ST. It didn't say what software he was using. It just said an Atari ST, floppy disks, and creator software. So creator software could have been anything. But I did some more research into it. I kind of went down a rabbit hole looking into this whole Atari ST music production thing. And it was um, a bunch of people have actually used this uh, this computer. And there's like a lot of like people that are still using it today to do kind of like digital music. They... Um, I saw a video, I think the software is called Cubase. I don't know if that's what uh, Fat Boy Slim was using here or not. But there's a lot of people that still use these computers to, like, to this day doing kind of like synthesized music because the computer did have both MIDI input and MIDI output, which is just really cool. And I also just really love when old technology has kind of like finds like it's it's still being used like you know like people that like still have like v vcrs and stuff like that and just find to be that to be really interesting and really cool i wish i kind of still had my vcr to be perfectly honest because i got rid of a lot of my vhs tapes like i want to say like 10 years ago i think i like i saved a handful of them like the ones i movies i really really liked i i still have but i got rid of a lot of that and kind of regret getting rid of the tapes i mean my vcr player was broken but um just people that find kind of like new uses for all technology. I just really, that's something that really interests me. And like, I kind of went, like I said, went down a rabbit hole looking into this computer just because, um, let me bring up my notes here on it again. So it's an Atari ST uh, used by various musicians. It has, like I said, built in MIDI, uh, MIDI and out, MIDI in input and output ports. Um, it was low cost. So like Darub uses it for Sandstorm. Depeche Mode used it. I don't remember what album it was, but Depeche Mode would use it on at least one album. The Pet Shop Boys used it on something. Fleetwood Mac produced something on it as well. And I didn't really check what years those were, but then it was just interesting seeing people, like YouTube videos of people using, still using these computers to this day, using it to create music with um, various software. Like I said, I think it was called Cubase, but... Um, that was just something I found really interesting about this because at the time, if the, I think the computer came out in the mid '80s, so like, like let's say '85, I'm gonna actually bring up the the Atari ST information here. Let me just bring this up, Atari ST. So yeah, the Atari ST came out in yeah June of 1985. So when uh, Fat Boy Slim went to start working on this album, but let me see what the recording dates were. If there was a recording set. Yeah, there's no really recording dates because they think he just did it all on his own. But um, so like you're looking at like something like 13 years later, so 1985 to 1998, and then you're looking at um, this computer coming out 37 years ago and people still using it to create music or do whatever. It's just really interesting to me. But um, really liked this album. Um, I've definitely listened to it a couple times since I since a few days ago. I listened to it a few days ago and I listen listen to it again today. Um, it's really solid. I remember having one classmate that was really into Fat Boy Slim at the time, and um, one of my other classmates was, "Oh, you should Fat Boy Slim is totally going to sell out." I don't really, like I said, I didn't really follow his career that much. I don't know if he ever technically like sold out, or if you if you will, I don't really know. But um, overall, I enjoyed this album, and like I said, this video series it's a lot about nostalgia, but a lot of it I like whenever I watch a movie for this series or listen to an album or play a game. I'm going back through those things and playing them again, like it, like in this time, just so it's it, I it's more fresh and I'm not just doing it based on nostalgia. So there's that. So next video, we'll probably be doing a movie. I'm thinking we're going to be watching The Wedding Singer, so I haven't seen that. Um, I've seen it a couple times, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. So next episode will be The Wedding Singer, and then we'll probably do a video game after that. I'm not sure what, but uh, that's going to do it for now. Remember to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We'll see you again next time. Thanks again for watching. Take care. Have a good one.